Hello, I'm Phil Archer from GS1 Global Office. GS1 is a standards development organization that traces its history back to the 26th of June 1974, when the first barcode went beep at a checkout in the US. Now, for that to happen, the product manufacturers, the retailers, and the point-of-sale equipment manufacturers all had to agree on common standards. Now, scanners are still going beep billions of times a day at checkouts around the world, but the standards and the systems, and GS1, have all evolved and expanded as industry demands have evolved and expanded. Supply chains are now global in a way that was barely foreseen in 1974, in 1991, the web changed everything and e-commerce was born. The world changed again in 2007 with the introduction of the smartphone. There are three fundamental layers to the GS1 system. Identify, capture and share. First, the identify layer. Now, anyone can create an identifier for their own internal use. That's easy. But as soon as you pass an item on to another system, that internal identifier is likely to be useless. To be useful across business partners, along the supply chain, across borders, identifiers need to be managed independently. They need to be globally unique, and the shorter the better. GS1 can offer a globally unique product identifier in as little as seven digits plus a check digit. That's handy if your product is something small, like an eyeliner pencil or a vial of vaccine. We provide standardized globally interoperable identifiers for locations as well, and shipments, and hospital beds and equipment, returnable assets like gas bottles and pallets, railway wagons and more. The capture layer is where barcodes and RFID tags come in. And by barcode, I mean any optical data carrier, whether it's the old familiar one-dimensional code from 1974, a data matrix, a QR, or anything else. There's a similar variety of RFID technologies as well. Finally, there's the share layer, that is, the data layer. Now, that can be data about events along the supply chain, passing ordering and delivery information between business partners, and it's foundational data about products. Manufacturers and retailers, whether traditional shops with members of staff serving individual customers across the counter or an online retailer, they depend on GS1 standards to provide descriptions of millions of products for their inventories and their websites. Now, this would be a very long and very boring presentation if I were to list and describe all our standards, but I'll focus on a couple that I think are more likely to be relevant to you for e-commerce. Let's start with images. The GS1 image specification provides substantial and precise detail on different kinds of image. Now, front and back and sides are easy for a rectangle, uh, but what about a cylinder? Is the image straight on or taken from an elevated position? If it's elevated, at what angle are shadows shown? This is likely to be of very direct relevance to you. What about images designed for use online on small screens? GS1 offers guidance on how an image may be modified slightly to improve product recognition on the small screen without losing recognition of that same product on the physical shelf. Now, to support our product identification standards, our Verified by GS1 service offers a thin layer of data that allows retailers to be sure that the correct identifier is being used for the correct product. It's not a full description, that's, that's not what it's for. It's there so that if someone says, I have product X for sale and it has identifier Y, you can check. That's useful for all kinds of retailers, including marketplaces, in the continual fight against counterfeit goods. And we can do this because our identifiers don't just follow a particular syntax. They're applied according to strictly defined rules. How much can a product vary before it needs a new identifier? Are those identifiers persistent? They used not to be, they are now. Now, finally, this wouldn't be a presentation from me if I didn't highlight the standard I work on most closely. Called GS1 Digital Link, it takes our system of identifiers and puts them on the web as URLs. Now that means 
everything with a GS1 identifier also has an online identity. It's based on linked data principles, and it can be used as the starting point for discovering links from that item to any number of associated digital assets using typed links. Now, this isn't the time and place to go into detail, although I'd be very happy to do so on another occasion. But the underlying promise, one day, is to create a trusted, open access, decentralized knowledge graph of products in which GS1 identifiers help to connect products across a vast ecosystem of different sources of data. Looking to the future, we're also involved in things like decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials. We think that's a technology that'll play a big part in retail and healthcare in the future, as it provides a very high level of certainty regarding data provenance and integrity, even among partners who've never met. Our standards are fully aligned with similar organizations like W3C and ISO, both in terms of the process by which they're developed and the intellectual property checks that we make. You are, of course, very welcome to join those working groups and help to develop the future direction of commerce. Now, GS1 is not one organization, but a federation of 115 independent organizations around the world. They vary in size, from small ones that just offer the basic identification system through to much larger members of the GS1 Federation who offer quite a large range of data-based services. In every case, it's where manufacturers and retailers, the healthcare industry, transport and logistics, construction and marketplaces work together to improve the efficiency of supply chains through common standards to identify, capture, and share data about physical things. It really is the global language of business.